Um, you may have noticed that in the title of this addendum, we have both trig functions and we have equations and identities. Um, actually, for the first three pages of the addendum correspond to the trig functions chapter, chapter 12. And the last, uh, like, five pages of it um, correspond to trig equations and identities, um, which is chapter 13. So here we're already starting the trig equations and identities half of this um, addendum. Okay, so in 13e, we're going to start talking about the compound angle formulas, which are similar to the double angle formulas, but they're more general, right? Because the double angle formulas assume that the two component angles are the same. The uh, compound angle, angle formulas, each angle that you add together, can be a totally different angle, okay? So here we're going to start with a little mini investigation here. And here we have uh, pairs of angles that the book gives us. And we are going to kind of like see with the calculator that actually the compound angles actually, uh, comp compound angle formulas actually work. Okay. So first what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take our calculator and we're going to put it in degree mode uh, by putting it into mode degree. And then we're going to start calculating the cosines for um, these angles here because it asks us to find the cosines of these angles then it asks us to find the difference of the cosines uh, then it asks us to find the cosine of each and subtract them and then based on these we're gonna like fill this in okay so first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this 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 and this for the first two and I'm not gonna bore you by showing you how to do all of them I'll do a couple and then after that I will uh, go offline and fill this whole thing in. Okay, so first I'm going to say cosine of 47, and I'm going to fill that in. Cosine of 47 turns out to be 0.682. Okay, so I'm going to put 0.682 here. And then I want to find the cosine of B, which is 24, so that would be cosine of 24, and that would be 0.914. Usually we use three significant figures to talk about the values for sine and cosine. Okay, and I'm going to do that for these other angles here. And uh, remember that when you find this little C here means radians, so this would be three radians and two radians. When you're going to do radians, of course, you need to go mode and change to radians. Okay, so I'll be back and I'm going to fill in this table for you. Okay, we're back. And so let me show you what I did. For this column, this column, and this column, basically what I did was I took Cosine of 47, calculated on the calculator. Cosine of 24 degrees, calculated on the calculator, and so on. So I got these four values just by typing in cosine and the degree value they gave me, and I got these four numbers here. Basically, our mission here is to figure out um, if we can figure out indirectly the cosine of the difference of the angles A minus A, A and B. So like so what if we wanted to figure out, instead of the cosine of A and cosine of B, what if we wanted to figure out cosine of A minus B? Okay, the direct way to do that is we're going to subtract A minus B. We're going to get different angles, like 47 minus 24 gives me 23 degrees. 138 minus 49 gives me 89 degrees. If I did the cosine of each one of these on the calculator, I would get 0.921 and 0 0.017. Okay, now one uh, very common mistake that students sometimes do is, if they see cosine of capital A minus B, they think that maybe they could do kind of a distributive property and uh, uh, kind of multiply the cosine times the A and then subtract the cosine times B. Uh, but actually, you know, remember, cosine is not being multiplied times A. Cosine is not being multiplied times B. Uh, it is actually a function which works with the value of a and figures out another value which corresponds to that. And remember, look, remember how sine and cosine look? They're very squiggly lines. They're not what we call linear. They're not lines. So, you know, the reason why you can do distributive property is because, uh, you know, multiplication is linear. Uh, when you do um, cosine of two things are subtracted, you may not do that. Okay, so let's see the value you get if you try to do cosine of A minus cosine of B. Let's see if we can get the same values 0.921 and 0.017. No, we don't. We get something completely different. If we take 0.682 and subtract 0.914, obviously we're going to get like a negative number, right? And that's what we get here. Here, point, negative 0.743 minus 0.656, even more negative numbers. So obviously we're not getting the same numbers as we do if we directly take the cosine of the difference of the angles, right? 
So actually, this turns out to be the identity, which allows us to find indirectly the cosine of the difference of the two angles. We can find the cosine and the sines of each of the angles, and then we combine them in this way, multiplying the two cosines, multiplying the two sine values, and adding them together. And then we can see that we do get the same values. So, um, for example, I had to put the sine values in the calculator also to find those. I multiplied them together. I added them to the cosine A times cosine B values that I got here. I end up with 0 0.921 for uh, cosine of 23 degrees, and it matches, right? Then I do the same thing with uh, 89 degrees. Uh, I put uh, 138 degrees here and 49 degrees here, and I get 0 0.018, very close to 0 0.017. I didn't get the exact same value because you, you can see, like, when you start, like, saying, okay, here I'm going to use three significant figures, um, here I might not use three significant figures, in the end you're going to get, like, slight errors in, in rounding if you don't use a whole bunch of digits, which is my case here. Okay? Finally, if I'm going to do three radians and two radians, first thing I need to do is change my calculator into radians mode again. And when I do that, I am going to find the cosine value for three and the cosine value for th two, and, and then I'm going to fill in this table again. And I'll, I'm going to do that offline, and then I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So we took the cosine of three radians, and we got this. Took the cosine of two radians, we got this. And then we took the cosine of three minus two radians, which is cosine of one radians, and we got this, okay? So let's see, how do we find this using these two values? Well, we're going to do the most obvious wrong thing, which is we're going to subtract these two values, and we're going to get something totally different, okay? So don't do that. Then we're going to find the sine of three and the sine of two, and we find out that that's 0 0.14, 0 0.909. We're going to multiply those together, and then we're going to add it to the product of these two, and then we get the right value. Okay, so we've, we've shown with these three demonstrations that this indeed is the identity, which allows you to find the difference, uh, or the cosine of the difference of, of two angles, using the cosines and sines of the two angles separately. Okay, let's move on. Uh, explain what two math rules are used in the proof of the compound angle cosine formula, which is this one here. The one we've been using up here is, uh, do you, th you know, you might be confused by these. Where you're, you've seen this one here, plus over minus, right? You may not have seen this one, which is minus over plus. The reason uh, that they have it backwards here is what they're saying is, well, either you're going to say the cosine of these two added together is equal to the, the, the product of the cosines minus the product of the sines. And the other thing that this is showing you is that if you have cosine of A minus B, that that is equal to the product of the cosines plus the product of the sines. Okay, so there's actually two formulas in one here. You pair the top uh, plus and minus together. You pair the bottom minus and plus together. Those are the twos that go together. So it's just a compact way of showing that uh, there's two different equations here. Okay? And so what two math rules do we use to prove uh, this here? If you look at uh, the page 371 reading where it shows the proof of uh, this relationship, that this is actually equal to this, um, you'll see that it is not like a really um, difficult proof conceptually, uh, it has many lines of calculation. But basically what they do is they draw a clever diagram, and then from this diagram they use two uh, rules, one of it which is the cosine rule, and the other is the distance formula. So basically they use these two different rules to uh, figure out the, the uh, length of a line in the diagram. And then they set it equal to each other. And then based on that, they can figure out that uh, this uh, cosine here is equal to uh, this multiplication and sum. Okay? And this side of it comes from the, um, from the distance formula. And this side of it comes from the uh, cosine rule. Okay, and a lot of stuff cancels out. It's just like amazing. Whoever did this was like a genius. And you don't need to know the proof, but uh, you could take a look at it and look at each individual step and see that each individual step 
is not uh, beyond your understanding. And it's just like pretty amazing the person who, um, you know, drew that diagram and then thought of um, using that diagram to and two simple rules that were already existed uh, to to prove to make this new identity. OK, and then finally, there's two other identities, which is the sum or difference of two angle uh, sine and sum or uh, difference of two angles tangent. OK. And uh, if you do have, for example, the difference of the angles derived, you can kind of see that all you need to do is like make this angle into a negative angle, and then it would become the positive, um, the the sum of two angle formula. So once you get the difference, it's pretty easy to get the the sum. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, these two formulas. I'm going to write them down for you here. So here um, I have written out the the rules for sine and tangent also. Now the sine rule, once you get the cosine one, is uh, basically takes advantage of the fact that sine is is basically cosine shifted by 90 degrees, right? So it uses that to um, take this and then make a new formula. Another thing of note is that notice how like if you change instead of a plus b, if you put a plus a and it becomes cosine of 2a, that you would change all these to a cosine a times cosine a minus sine a times sine of a you notice that that becomes cosine squared minus sine squared which is the identity for double angle right so like this is actually a general case but if you make both b and a both a then you're going to get the double angle formula that we knew from before same thing here if you change both b and a to a you're going to have sine a times cosine a plus sine a times cosine a, which is 2 sine a cosine a, which is the double angle formula for sine of 2a, right? Finally, how do you find the tangent angle? Well, remember how tangent is equal to sine over cosine? So basically, if you take uh, the sine formula and you divide it by the cosine formula and then you find common denominators to add everything, uh, you will see that you'll generate a bunch of little tangents inside the big tangent formula and uh, because you're dividing sines by cosines and and then you'll basically end up with this identity so like the the hard one to come up with is this one once you've come up with this one it's pretty easy to find the sine uh, identity and the tangent idea from those okay all right um, let's move on to number one it says to expand and simplify sine of 90 degrees plus theta. And we are going to use the identities that we just wrote. Okay, so this is like saying sine of big A plus uh, big B. How do we rewrite that? We're going to rewrite that as sine of 90 degrees times the cosine of theta plus, and we use plus here because you see there's plus here and plus here on top. We are going to use plus because of that. And so then we put cosine of 90 degrees times the sine of theta. Oops. Okay. And then uh, we know that the sine of 90 degrees is actually 1. And the cosine of 90 degrees is 0. So this becomes 0. And this just becomes cosine of theta. And lo and behold, we have discovered that uh, cosine theta is sine of, th sine of theta, uh, theta shifted by 90 degrees, okay? Or actually, we kind of already knew that, but we use the identity formulas to derive that, okay? All right, C. It has sine of 180 degrees minus theta. So we're going to do something similar here, except now we're going to use the minus. So that means that our identity is going to be sine of 180 degrees times the cosine of theta minus the, the cosine of 180 degrees, cosine of 180 degrees, times the uh, sine of theta. And remember that the sine of 180 degrees is actually equal to zero, so this part's equal to zero, and the cosine of 180 degrees is actually negative 1, so it's minus negative 1 times the sine of theta, which is equal to sine of theta. Okay, so the, what this is saying here is that if you uh, shift sine by 180 degrees uh, and then uh, reflect it about the x-axis, you end up with the same thing as before. Okay, so that's 
We knew that, right? If you shift sine by 180 degrees, and then you reflect it, then you're going to get the same thing. Okay, uh, let's do E. So we're going to take uh, two angles, 2 pi and A, and we're going to subtract them. So we're going to use this identity again, and we're going to subtract sine cosine minus cosine sine. So we're going to have sine of 2 pi times cosine of big A minus cosine of 2 pi times the sine of big A, okay? And uh, sine of 2 pi is actually 0, and cosine of 2 pi is actually positive 1, so we're going to have minus 1 times the sine of A. So we have negative sine of A. Um, so if we take, uh, if we take um, the sine function, and we shift it by 2 pi and we reflect it by the x-axis, we get a inverted sine function. Okay? And that makes sense, right? All right. Um, let's take g. So tangent of pi over 4 plus theta, we're adding two uh, angles to form a tangent uh, of a sum of two angles. So we're going to reuse this uh, identity here. So we'll have tangent of pi over 4 plus tangent of theta divided by 1 minus the tangent of pi over 4 times the tangent of theta. Remember that the tangent of pi over 4 is the tangent of 45 degrees, which is 1. So basically what we're left with is 1 plus the tangent of theta divided by 1 minus 1 times the tangent of theta. Finally, we got tangent of pi plus theta. So we're going to use the same uh, identity right there. So we're going to have the tangent, the tangent of pi plus the tangent of theta divided by 1 minus the tangent of pi plus, or not plus, times the tangent of theta. And tangent of pi, remember, is uh, 0 divided by um, negative 1, or so it would just be 0. So uh, that means that it would be 0 plus tangent of theta divided by 1 minus 0, so it's just equal to the tangent of theta. So basically what that means is if you shift uh, the tangent function by pi, you have the same tangent function again. And that makes sense, right, because tangent repeats every pi. So it totally makes sense. So number three, it says to use the compound angle, of ang angle formulas in reverse. So let's look at this one. It's got cosine, cosine, plus sine, sine. Let's see. Which one does that look like? Cosine, cosine, plus sine, sine. That looks like uh, this one here, right? So it would be cosine of the difference of the two angles, right? Because since it's plus, that would be the minus for that one. So let's do that. We're going to rearrange this one. So instead, we're going to write this is equal to the cosine of 2 theta minus theta, the difference of the two angles, which is equal to the cosine of theta, okay? Um, now let's look at C. C is cosine times sine minus sine times cosine. That one looks like this one here, except the only difference is, do you see how this one has sine cosine, then cosine sine? This one has cosine sine, then sine cosine, okay? So this would actually be the negative of this. So it would be negative sine of A minus B. Okay, so let's rewrite that. So it would be negative sine of the first angle minus the second angle. Remember also, like if you have a um, sine of uh, 30 degrees, uh, it's also equal to negative 
of the sine of negative 30 degrees, okay? Because sine of 30 degrees and sine of negative 30 degrees gives you opposite values, okay? So instead of writing it like this, you could write it like sine of b minus a, okay? Uh, e, we have sine times sine minus cosine times cosine. So that kind of looks like uh, this one here, but uh, it's a little bit different because this has cosines minus the sines. And what we have here is we have sines minus the cosines. So we do need to take the negative of the value also. So instead, we're going to have cosine of uh, the two added together, but we're going to take the negative of that value. So negative cosine of the two added together. Let's rewrite that. We're going to have negative cosine of phi plus theta. Find for g, that's obviously a sum of uh, angles for tangent function. Uh, let's see, we got tangent of a minus the tangent of b, 1 plus the tangent of a times tangent of b. So that would be uh, equal to the difference of tangent of a minus b. So let's rewrite that one. So that equals tangent of 2 theta minus theta. And of course, tangent of 2 theta minus theta is just equal to tangent of theta. And we're done with that page.